Looking to capitalize on the success of Super Mario RPG, Shigeru Miyamoto attempted to reinvent its style. And by keeping the same combat mechanics, but establishing a new type of animation, the world received one of the most beloved entries in the Mario franchise. This is the Paper Mario Iceberg. Familiar Tune Waiting an additional 10 seconds after the jingle that plays on the chapter title cards will cause a complete version of the Super Mario Bros. theme song to start playing. 8-Bit Throwback In Boo Mansion, if the player goes to the door across the hall from the entrance and jumps in the jar inside of it, Mario will come out of the jar looking like his original 8-bit sprite from Super Mario Bros. Paper Mario Color Splash Leak On September 22nd of 2016, a playable version of the entire game was accidentally made accessible to those who preloaded it two weeks before its intended release date. Nintendo of America quickly took down the preload file within hours of its discovery. Paper Mario 64 on the DD Initially, the game was going to be developed exclusively for the 64 disk drive, an add-on for the Nintendo 64, however the 64DD was delayed several times, and rather than wait for the developers, they decided instead to concentrate on a cartridge version. The 64DD was finally released in late 1999, however it was only released in Japan, but by that time many of the proposed games had already moved over to the 64 base and less than 10 games were ever released for the add-on. The Spiked Rollers In Paper Mario The Origami King, there is one room inside of Bowser's castle that contains weapons used by the spikes, their spike balls, and their spiked rollers from Super Mario 3D World. While origami spikes in this game can spit up and throw spike balls, the rollers are never seen. Despite this, there's a dummied out model associated with them that depicts this same roller. Hidden Luigi Sprites Under the Smash Attack mini game room, there are 10 unused Luigi sprites. Since the mini game has Mario searching boxes for 10 portraits of Princess Peach, it's possible that the game's goal was originally to find Luigi in the boxes 10 times, and the developers simply forgot to remove the Luigi sprites. Cooper Kiss Glitch It is possible to get your partner Cooper to give Mario a kiss with a glitch in the Ice Palace chapter. During a puzzle that requires the player to discover the real Bombette amidst several imposters, the player can leave the room and re-enter it by clipping through a wall. Upon re-entering, you will have changed your partner to Cooper. Cooper will then kiss Mario upon solving the puzzle, instead of Bombette as intended. Doing this with partners other than Cooper causes the game to crash instead. Unused Dinos An enemy known as Albino Dino appear as statues in the Crystal Palace. However, they are never actually fought. They can still be fought using Game Shark codes, and Gumbario actually has Tattle dialogue for them. They only have one attack, a charging ram that damages Mario. Early Luigi's Mansion References Luigi keeps his diary in a secret basement under his and Mario's house. If you manage to read the entries, you can find one entry that reveals Luigi is actually afraid of ghosts, and another where he says he wants to have the lead role in his own adventure. These diary entries are referencing Luigi's Mansion, which was also in development at the time. In Thousand Year Door, one of the crows in Twilight Town talks about opening a real estate website called Luigi's Mansion, but his friend warns him against it in case of possible copyright infringement. He also mentions times when we used to play golf and tennis and have parties. These are references to Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, and Mario Party. 416 Year Long Item Hunt In Dry Dry Desert, north of Colorado's camp, you can find a yellow brick which, when hit multiple times, will reveal three hidden question mark blocks, which subsequently give you a shroom, one hit, Super Shroom, 10 hits, and Ultra Shroom at 100 hits. This block keeps track of how many times you hit it and has a maximum unsigned 4-byte value of 
4,294,967,294, which means that hitting it more than that amount would reset the blocks and spawn them over the existing ones, allowing you to get the shrooms again. And this would actually take 36.3 years to reach. And hitting the block again that many times would reset it again, causing the blocks to spawn over the existing ones. Continuously repeating the process until the game freezes would take just over 416 years to achieve. The Other Ninja Turtles The Koopa Brothers are an obvious reference to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Both the Koopa Brothers and the Teenage Turtles are turtles that wear bandanas around their heads. The Koopa Brothers also speak in skater slang similar to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Spiritual Sequel after a falling out with Square, the developers of the Final Fantasy series, and then developers of Super Mario RPG 2, Nintendo renamed Paper Mario to Mario RPG 64, and then to Super Mario Adventure. After that, they renamed the game Mario Story, before picking the final name of Paper Mario. Interestingly, the name Mario Story stuck in Japan. A true sequel to Super Mario RPG has never been officially produced. Demo Shenanigans Two miscellaneous files have been found in the code of Thousand Year Door. They say, Ha! I'm not telling you my secrets at the show. Wait for the final version. These were used as an E3 demo and cannot be found in the multi-game demo disc for the GameCube. The Berserk Status There's an unused badge in the game's code called the Power of Rage. This badge is fully functional and can be worn if hacked into Mario's inventory. When Mario wears it, he takes on an angry pose during battles and becomes much stronger. And you can't control his actions, similar to the Berserk status in many RPGs. Wherefore art thou Admiral Bomberry? In Origami King, if you inspect the steering wheel of the Princess Peach cruise ship while Bobby the bomb is next to Mario, he will remark how he once dreamed of being a captain or an admiral. This is a reference to Admiral Bobbery, Mario's partner from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Mario and the Beanstalk Parody In the sixth chapter, Mario has to help the flowers in flower fields in order to get a magical bean, fertile soil, and miracle water. He then uses these three items to grow a giant beanstalk that takes him to Cloudy Climb, high above the flower fields, where the chapter boss resides. Instant Game Overs In Super Paper Mario, there are occasions where choosing the wrong choice will result in an instant game over. These are found near the end of the game. Dementio will ask you to join his side to take down Count Black. If you say yes four times, he will enslave the characters and you will get a game over. There is also one near the beginning of the game. Merlin tells you to take the pure heart and save all worlds from destruction. If you say no three times, you will also get a game over. Double Sun Dilemma When in dry dry desert, take a close look at the background during a battle. The sun is crossing it slowly, but before it goes down on the right, another one is already rising to the left, meaning two suns can be seen in the sky simultaneously. Can I use this chimney? In Shiver City, Mario needs to find Herringway for part of a quest at the start of Chapter 7. Entering his house reveals a seemingly empty room, but if he goes onto the roof of the house and falls down the chimney, he enters Herringway's secret home area where he can be spoken to. Player's Foresight To meet Mustafa in Dried Dry Outpost, you have to buy a dried shroom and dusty hammer in the shop. You're supposed to learn this by giving a lemon to Sheik, but if you buy the items beforehand, the shopkeeper lampshades how lucky you are to have stumbled into the correct solution. Mustafa will raise an eyebrow at your mysterious knowledge. Calming down Yoshi's parents. In chapter five, the five Yoshi kids go missing, leading to mass panic within the village. Each time you rescue one child, you can go back to the village and discover that their parent which has the same color, has calmed down and now has a unique dialogue with you. Mario cannot lose. 
During the fight against Kami Koopa at the finale, when you use Twink and Peach, we can find out that it's purely scripted, so you can not only not lose, you can't even select options that aren't related to winning. The only thing that keeps it from being a cutscene is that you need to do the inputs yourself. Putting the odds into your favor. Winning the in-game Happy Lucky Lottery in Thousand Year Door does not depend on luck at all, but rather on the date that you purchase the ticket based on the GameCube's internal clock. The following are the prizes. The fourth prize is between days 4 and 10. Third prize is between 25 and 35. The second prize is between 85 and 115 days. And the first reward is between 335 and 395. If you set the system's clock back a day and then return to chat to Lucky, the lottery's manager, he'll notice that the internal clock has been interfered with. You can either admit to it or claim you did not tamper with it, but you'll have to spend 500 coins to do so. Daylight savings is not put into account. Buying a new ticket won't actually increase your chances of winning either, but will instead reset the days back from zero when you bought it. Getting caught as a Koopa patrol. In the chapter six event during the intermission, if the player times the sneaky parasol item at the exact frame when the Koopa patrol spots Princess Peach, she herself will become a Koopa Troll, but they will still treat her as Peach, resulting in them taking her back to her room while she is in disguise. This also works on a Hammer Brother in the library. This is caused by a lack of landing sprite for the Koopa Troll. Toadception A toad in the level Petal Meadows will discuss his top video games. He'll begin by discussing Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance, and later on he'll discuss Paper Mario for the N64. Finally, he'll reveal how he's now playing Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door despite being in the game itself, and that the game's ending is worth playing through. Super Paper Mario Origins This game was originally going to be released exclusively for the GameCube before being moved to the Wii. The evidence exists in this game's data as there is a folder which contains GameCube rendered models of characters like Mario and Princess Peach. The Wii textures are about 50% larger. Additionally, there's an unused enemy in the game data named Fly Guy, which is a flying shy guy using a propeller. It's unknown where this would have been used in the game, and there are also 9 more unused enemies that are unused but some of them were still present in the previous games of the series. Luigi in the background. In Paper Mario Sticker Star, Luigi can be seen sitting in the background of five different stages. Using Paper Eyes, the player can even pull him off the page where he will run off screen. Every time the player does this, the leftmost house in the Decalburb suburbs will have a numerous newspaper article about Luigi being spotted in that location. If the player finds him all five times, he will appear during the credits. Final Boss Foreshadowing In Color Splash, at Sunglow Ridge, Huey manages to clean up a whole mess of black paint. At first, it seems to be a one-time thing, but it's a clue to his role in the final boss fight where you have to use him to absorb the black paint off of Bowser. Familiar Faces in Francis' Room In Super Paper Mario, the player can go into one of Francis's password-protected rooms in chapters 3 through 4. You can look on the shelves to find items and characters from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, including Petuni, Vivian, and all the Yoshi colors. Absent Characters After the pre-release interview revealing the restrictions of Paper Mario Origami King, fans mistook one of them to mean specific original characters could not be reused across the games, even if they met the rules. Producer Kensuke Tanabe really stated that he hoped Ollie and Olivia would remain in the hearts of viewers even if they were not seen after Origami King. The game has a stronger role for Sombrero Guy and a name drop for Kirsty, whereas the previous games included the explicit reappearance of the Sniffit or Whiffit host for a stage, indicating the misunderstanding and some wiggle room. The statements and example were most likely phrased that way to avoid spoiling Ali and Olivia's irreversible deaths at the game's conclusion. 
Mystery Code in Sticker Star. In World 5-1 Shy Guy Jungle, one of the things Mario can find in the pile of trash is a serial key. Some say that this is an actual serial key for something, but what it's really for is unknown. We do know for sure that it is not a Club Nintendo or eShop code, because both codes will display wrong code instead of code has already been entered. Gulliver References In Animal Crossing New Leaf, the NPC Gulliver will mention not meeting such a noble skipper since Bobbery of Rogueport, making references to Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door and Bobbery specifically. He also references the Over There, a reference to Chapter 7 in Super Paper Mario. Infinite Happy Flower Badges In the original Paper Mario, on the east path of flower fields, there is a set of three trees that will drop a happy flower badge when hit in the correct order. If the badge is left uncollected and the trees are hit again in the same order, another happy flower badge will spawn. This can be done to repeatedly spawn multiple happy flower badges, however the game will start to act as if there's only one. Flavio Glitch This is a glitch that players can use to sequence break certain parts of the game, allowing the player to travel with Flavio through the entire game. He even appears in cutscenes where Mario is not on screen. Herringway Glitch Herringway can be changed into a standard Bumpty or become invisible by pausing the game soon after Mario and Herringway enter the mayor's room. This can also be done shortly after starting a dialogue with the detective in Chapter 7. He will resurface if he is invisible when the room is left. When the mayor gives Herringway the present, the game will freeze and a debug screen will appear if he becomes the typical Bumpty. When specific carrying sprites are supposed to be utilized, he just becomes temporarily invisible in the Virtual Console release. Otherwise, he develops a happy look and sometimes swiftly flaps his flippers. Despite the mixed receptions on many of the entries within this series, Paper Mario is still a staple within Nintendo's catalog. And with the recent addition into the series, Paper Mario will only remain in the hearts of many. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and let us know what topics we should cover next.